We at the Multilateral Investment Fund have observed something of a disconnect between the potential and the reality of green investment in this region. It was this disconnect that drove us at the MIF to seek out Bloomberg New Energy Finance to create the Climate Scope. Together, I believe we built a powerful information and decision-making tool, a public good, available free to anyone interested. But before we show it to you, let me tell you a bit about its origins. It is obvious from our beautiful surroundings in Rio de Janeiro that this region is disproportionately endowed with natural resources. Nearly 22% of the planet's forests are in this region. Over 30% of the Earth's available freshwater is here. And the second largest reef system worldwide is in the Caribbean Sea. Latin America and the Caribbean make up only 16% of the world's land mass, but 40% of its biodiversity. Six of the world's 17 megadiversity countries are here. In short, the region is a biodiversity superpower richly endowed with natural capital. Thinking of an ecosystem as a stock of capital can help us conceptualize how to preserve it while generating a flow of income. We take a huge risk if we monetize this natural capital faster than we replenish it. Since 1980, this region has lost 40% of its mangrove forests, which are critical to capturing carbon, stopping erosion, and preserving watersheds. Nearly two-thirds of our coral reefs, a habitat for an estimated 10,000 species, have suffered damage. Our colleagues at the IDB estimate that the region stands to lose roughly $100 billion annually, 2% of regional GDP, as a result of climate change. Our stock of natural capital depends in part on the rate of depletion of finite resources, but it also depends on our progress in deploying technologies that make better use of our renewable resources. Wind, solar, hydropower, biogas, and biofuels, the drivers of renewable energy, can also be considered a powerful form of natural capital. Yet last year, the region attracted less than 4% of the estimated $283 billion in global clean energy investment. In short, the scale of our green investment fails to reflect our resource endowment. But it is not enough just to grow clean energy investment. We need to find mechanisms to distribute the dividends of this natural capital to those at the base of the pyramid, the 360 million people in our region who live on less than $10 a day. Meeting their needs for basic services remains a critical unfinished agenda. 30 million people still lack access to electricity. 115 million lack basic sanitation. 130 million lack access to potable water. And 85 million still rely on wood for cooking. The cruel irony is that these people often live closest to natural capital and yet remain cut off from its benefits. Where can we at the MIF add value? Our mandate is to promote private sector development that benefits the poor and low-income populations, their businesses, their farms, and their households. We are a laboratory for development. Our interventions solve collective action problems, pioneer innovative solutions, share risks, fill skill gaps, and provide knowledge, all in order to unlock private activity at the base of the pyramid. We are well positioned to partner with the private sector in meeting these challenges. We have an array of tools to bring to bear, grants, equity, and lending. We can deploy these tools alone or in combination to promote green investment through launching funds to finance clean technology firms, training green tech fund managers, mobilizing financing for small businesses and poor households to purchase clean technology, training small actors in the use and benefits of clean technology, linking small businesses and farms to green value chains, testing new business models for off-grid, small-scale power generation for the poor, and lowering information costs for those who invest in, produce, or consume clean technology goods and services. I must confess that when the MIF was founded almost 20 years ago, we did not consciously seek to work on the environment. Our involvement in climate change mitigation and adaptation grew steadily as we responded to our clients' needs. 
We recently analyzed our past projects and found that we have actually been piloting climate change solutions for 15 years, a total of 45 projects valued at more than $140 million. Over time, we've seen the emergence of a common set of challenges constraining green investment, particularly for the base of the pyramid. Let me focus on two, access to finance and gaps in the clean energy value chain. First of all, finance remains a central constraint for both producers and consumers of green technology. This financing gap persists despite steady improvement in the economics of clean energy. This region's relatively high electricity prices offer opportunity for profitable clean energy to displace fossil fuels. And falling prices for clean energy equipment mean that new capacity can be installed at relatively low cost. Yet startup and early stage equity for green investment remains extremely scarce in this region. Indeed, from 2006 to 2011, Climate scope data show that only $3.7 billion was invested in the clean energy space. Many of us here can play a powerful catalytic role. The MIF and our partners are mobilizing capital and knowledge for early stage green companies through our venture capital funds, such as Eco Enterprises 1 and 2, Renovarum in Chile, and the new Microcarbon Development Fund. Micro and small enterprises and their customers still face serious barriers in accessing green finance. Nonetheless, microfinance has emerged as a significant lever to help expand clean energy access to the energy poor. Climate scope data indicate that out of 448 microfinance institutions operating in the region, 71 offer some sort of green financial product. In all, $75 million in microloans have been dispersed by green microfinance institutions in the region to date, providing some 44,000 low-income borrowers access to clean and affordable renewable energy. This volume of lending merely scratches the surface of demand. Most microfinance institutions are poorly equipped to manage the risks and seize the opportunities of green technology. So we've pioneered initiatives like Ecomicro, which together with the Nordic Development Fund will dedicate $7 million in grants to help more microfinance institutions offer these products. The MIF history of channeling investment to the base of the pyramid has proven useful in directing part of the huge volumes of international climate aid such as the Climate Investment Funds and the Forest Investment Programs to the local private sector. We all know that these funds hold tremendous potential to develop low carbon economies, but too often they do not directly benefit poor populations. The MIF has been entrusted with the first ever private sector forest investment program located in Mexico to bring these funds to the base of the pyramid. Many countries in this region have nascent clean energy supply chains. Importers, manufacturers, installers, and servicers exist, but are struggling to connect with each other and with clients. These gaps offer challenges, but also tremendous opportunities. The clean energy value chain has three components, finance, products, and services. While finance is on the rise and available from at least one source in most countries, it is not always offered to the sectors with growth potential or at attractive rates. The supply of clean energy products, either locally produced or imported, remains a problem in much of the region. Based on climate scope information, Brazil is the only country with a complete value chain for at least two clean energy technologies, biofuels and biomass and waste. Mexico is on the road to becoming the first country with complete value chains for wind and solar. Services have been even slower to develop. Many countries lack a critical mass of qualified local consultants, installers, and project developers. As the market grows, these service providers will increasingly be in demand. Our experience suggests that four sets of information tools would have a powerful catalytic impact in accelerating climate investment in Latin America and the Caribbean. So we have constructed the Climate Scope as a user-friendly toolkit in these four areas. First, market intelligence especially for smaller players. These small firms drive innovation and growth. They take risks and no local conditions. Now the Climate Scope will provide them with a detailed mapping of clean energy value chains. This will allow financiers and entrepreneurs in different parts of the supply chain and even in different countries to identify gaps, find each other, and join together to complete value chains. Second, knowledge of sources and uses for finance. The Climate Scope will identify the volumes of finance coming from the development finance agencies, banks, 
investment funds, and microfinance institutions, and also show which sectors are and are not receiving funds. Lenders and investors can harness climate scope data to identify growth sectors with promising returns and strong demand for financing. Third is the policy and regulatory side. Private actors need to know about government incentives and policies for the clean energy market, but governments also need to understand the impact of their policies. By reading the country profiles, governments can see the different mixes of incentives at work in the region and the effect those policies have on investment. Finally, to sustain carbon markets, investors need to see where the private sector has already registered carbon projects and find companies that are active in greenhouse gas mitigation. We've been extremely fortunate to partner with the globally recognized Bloomberg New Energy Finance to develop a tool to objectively assess the investment climate for climate investment. The Climate Scope is a dynamic tool with an interactive dashboard where interested parties can change the weights of each parameter to suit their particular needs. Users can download complete data sets, country profiles, case studies, and even contact information for financial institutions and venture capital funds. The Climate Scope is not an academic exercise. The proof of its value will be in its impact on private and public decisions on green investment. We hope its unique combination of information on finance, policy, and market opportunities will make a real difference in the region. Let's imagine an entrepreneur in Peru who wants to start a mini wind sales and installation company. She uses the Climate Scope to learn about favorable import duties and tax credits for this technology. She then contacts the banks and venture capital funds that the Climate Scope shows are active in her country to secure funding. With some hard work and a little luck, she launches a new business. This business eventually reaches scale and perhaps even exports to the countries that the Climate Scope shows have demonstrated demand. The entrepreneur is better off, her employees are better off, her customers are better off, the electrical grid has a lower load, and the environment reaps low carbon benefits. Truly a virtuous circle. Or consider an official in the Ministry of Finance in Panama who could use the climate scope to determine whether a new government incentive has led to an increase in solar investment. He can also read about other countries to see how their incentives have affected private sector investment. Each country becomes a documented laboratory of policy interventions. Or let us view the report through the eyes of investors and lenders. A credit officer in Mexico could see the tremendous increase in wind power generation over the past few years which points to a new lending possibility in a growth market. An investor in Sao Paulo can see that mini hydro is a growing sector in Chile and therefore invests equity in a startup engineering firm. I hope that many of you see yourselves in some of these examples. Next year, I think we all want to see this region have a larger share of the global climate investment pie. We are committed to this work for the long term. We intend for this index to be an annual exercise. We encourage users to submit information for future editions through the web tool. Soon, we will release a mobile Climate Scope app so that you can take this information with you everywhere. Let us close by looking beyond our hemisphere to the planet we share with 7 billion people and an incredibly diverse array of flora and fauna. It was this image that inspired the great Caetano Veloso from his prison cell in 1969 to write his song Terra, a love song to the earth but I hope we also share the belief that it is within our grasp to preserve our natural capital while also growing our economies and improving lives at the base of the pyramid. This will not be easy. Success rests heavily on the quality of the information available to us and the use we make of that information. We strongly hope that the Climate Scope helps us to make the right choices.